So let's take a look at this example. Um, markup company has begun to produce a new product, product X, for which the following estimates have been made. So the material cost is $27, labor cost is $20, four hours at a rate of $5 per hour, variable production overheads, this includes machining, half an hour at $6 an hour, it's $3. So the total direct costs are $50 for material labor and variable production overheads. <coughs> now, production fixed overheads are budgeted at $300,000 per month. And because of the shortage of available machining capacity, the company will be restricted to 10,000 hours of machine time per month. So this is again sort of relevant based on what you would have seen in the lecture last week. Limiting factor. The absorption rate will be direct labor rate and the budgeted direct labor hours are $25,000 per month. It is estimated that the company could obtain a minimum contribution of $10 per machine hour on producing items other than product X. So if they want to use the machine for making anything else apart from product X, they are able to earn a minimum contribution of $10 per machine hour. <coughs> this is relevant because there is uh, a limiting factor of machine time. The direct cost estimates are not certain as to the material usage rates and labor productivity. It is recognized that the estimates of direct materials and direct labor costs may be subject to an error of plus or minus 15%. Machine time estimates are similarly subject to an error of plus or minus 10%. The company wishes to make a profit of 20% on full production cost from product X. Now determine the full cost plus based price for this example. Now, the beauty of this example is this. <coughs> Many assumptions can be made here. <coughs> so even for a relatively simple, so-called simple cost plus pricing estimate, certain assumptions have to be made and stated. In this example, we can identify two main problems. Whether you want to include, so should the opportunity cost of the machine time be included in the cost or not? Because it is said that machine hours are limited and if you decide to produce any other product apart from X, then the minimum contribution you can earn is $10, yeah? <coughs> What allowance, if any, should be made for the possible errors in the cost estimates? Because the labor efficiency and material consumption have a error margin of plus or minus 15%. And machine time estimates are subject to an error margin of plus or minus 10%. So in this case, what can we do? What are the assumptions that could be made? Option one exclude the opportunity cost for the machine time and what we are doing here is ignoring the possible costing errors. The plus or minus 15 percent and plus or minus 10 percent, we are ignoring them as well. Option two, you include the machine time opportunity cost but still ignore the possible costing errors of plus or minus 15 and plus or minus 10 percent. Option three, exclude machine time opportunity cost, but make full allowance for costing errors. Option four, include opportunity cost and make full allowance for possible errors in the costing. <laughs> so <laughs> you can have four different set of answers for this simple scenario. Okay. 
let us look at each of these one by one. What are we doing here? We are excluding the opportunity time for the machine and you are also simultaneously ignoring the possible costing errors. In this case, what you are doing is basically listing all the direct cost as given in the question material 27, labor 20, variable overheads 3, so total direct cost 30. <coughs> now, the <coughs> company wishes to make a profit of 20 percent on full production cost. Okay. <coughs> now, before the uh, markup for profit, we also have the fixed production overheads. We are told that fixed overheads are 300,000 dollars per month and the absorption rate will be direct labor rate, okay? And the budgeted direct labor hours are 25,000 dollars per month. <coughs> so we are using those two numbers. So 300,000 is the fixed overheads divided by 25,000 labor hours, you get 12 dollars per labor hour. Because this product has four labor hours, requires four labor hours, 12 times four labor hours is 48 dollars attributed towards fixed overheads for this product. So these are the variable costs, these are the fixed costs, this is the full cost per unit, 98. Then you add a profit markup of 20 percent to come to the selling price. This is the simplest cost plus approach. Simplest cost plus approach. <coughs> Any questions? Is this clear? Any questions? Is this clear? Questions? Is there anything you'd like me to explain? Any questions? Are you sure? I'm happy to repeat. Are we clear about this? Because we are going to increase the items for each of the next assumptions. <coughs> so the next assumption here is we include a machine time opportunity cost but we are ignoring the possible costing errors. So what are we doing here? We are taking the full cost as per the previous assumption which is the fixed and variable cost, full cost per unit. To that we add the opportunity cost. We are told that machine time is limited, right? machine time is limited and if you don't do product X but if you did something else, you are able to earn ten dollars per machine hour. Because you are able to earn ten dollars per machine hour, firstly, how many machine hours do we need for product X? You need half an hour. If you did anything else but X, you would be earning ten dollars an hour. This means you would be earning five dollars for half an hour, right? If you did anything else, you would be earning five dollars per half an hour. So by taking up the production of X, by taking up the production of X, you're giving up, you're giving up five dollars per machine, uh, five dollars for half an hour. Are we clear on this? If you were not producing X, then you could be making ten dollars an hour or five dollars for half an hour. But because we are making X, we are letting go of that opportunity and hence we have to account for that cost. And this is what we are doing here. The opportunity cost is ten dollars per machine hour. This unit, uh, each unit of X requires half an hour machine time and hence the opportunity cost is half an hour times ten dollars per machine hour, five dollars. So here adjusted full cost is ninety-eight plus five hundred and three. Then we add a markup of twenty percent and then you get a selling price of one twenty-three point six. <coughs> Earlier the selling price was how much? One hundred and seventeen. 
now it is 123. Next one, exclude machine time opportunity cost, but include the full allowance for possible costing errors. <laughs> so we take the full cost, um, so what we do is we take the material and labor cost as given in the question, but we know that they are subject to about 15% error margin. And in order to be conservative, so if you want to be conservative, do you want to be thinking that you will spend less or you will spend more? When I say conservative in terms of your calculations, you want to be the, looking at the worst case scenario. Yeah, you are looking at the worst case scenario. So in this case, you are looking at what is the maximum we could be spending on material and labor. So you could be spending 15% more on material and labor. So you take the material and labor cost, add 15% to that. That is what you could be spending on material and labor at the most. Then variable production overheads are subject to a 10% error margin. So you take the variable production overheads as they are and to that you add a 10% error margin, you get 3.3. So you add to this fixed production overheads at $12 times 4 hours 48 and because this is allocated on the basis of labor time, even this could be subject to so, because why would you allocate based on labor time? Because you assume that the cost driver is labor hours, right? Because you're assuming that the cost driver is labor hours and hence you're allocating based on labor time. So you include another 15% because material and labor were subject to 15% possible error margin. You add another 15% to this. So that's 7.2. So now you have you know, factored in the error margin for direct costs, variable production overheads and fixed production overheads. You take the totals. To this you add a 20% profit margin and now you have a selling price of $135. <coughs> Item D, include machine time opportunity cost and make full allowance for possible errors. Now, in the previous example, we already made full allowance for possible costing errors and we got a full cost of 112.55. Now all we have to do is to this number, we add the opportunity cost at $10 in a machine hour or $5 in this particular case. Now again, the machine time is subject to 10% possible error margin and hence we are increasing that by 10% and we get 5.5. So in this case, the adjusted full cost is, adjusted potential full cost is 118. To this, we add a profit markup of 20% and we have a selling price of 141. <coughs> so a very simple scenario like this could have four selling prices based on what you include, what you exclude. So if we assume that cost plus is simple, it is not as simple as it is. At the same time, it's not complicated, but you know, we still need to be aware of certain things. <coughs> Any questions? Are we good? Can we proceed? So go through this in detail and it should hopefully make sense. <coughs> 